to the station they thundered, disaster lay ahead. Something sticky splashed all over James. He had run into two tar wagons and was black from smoke box to cab. He was more dirty than hurt, but the tar wagons and some trucks were all to pieces. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. Excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber. You frightened my customers. I'll teach you and he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks. Go on, go on, they yelled, and bumped Percy's driver and fireman off the footplate. Oh, said Percy, sliding past the board. Percy was frantic. That's enough. Percy was sunk. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his control. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wee, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors, cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. Silly old board, thought Thomas. He had often tried to pass it, but had never succeeded. But this morning, he had made a plan. The fireman went to turn the points. Now for my plan, thought Thomas. Bumping the trucks fiercely, he jerked his driver off the footplate and followed them into the siding. Come back, yelled his driver. Fire and smoke, said Thomas. I am sunk. And he was. Oh dear, he said, I am a silly engine. Then there was trouble. As Gordon approached the new station, neither the driver or fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me, please! 
Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! That's nice. We don't need to stop, said Thomas happily. Yes, we do, called his driver, but it was too late. Then James pumped his pistons. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Rescue engine to the ready! James roared and raced down the track. He hit Gordon's buffer with a biff and a bash and a terrible smash. Gordon the Grand had toppled off the track into the muddy fen, and James the rescue engine had splished and sploshed into the mud after him. Oh, the indignity. Oh, my paintwork. Oh well, nice time of the year for a cruise. <laughs>